So you've just got yourself a brand new camera, but where do you start? Well, this video could be the perfect place. I'm going to guide you through some of the basics and get you started so you can take better photos with your brand new camera. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I like to share regular photography tutorials, tips and tricks, all designed to help you get more from your digital camera so you can take better photos. Please consider subscribing. Now, if you're new to the world of cameras and photography, then this video is for you, an introduction to some of the camera features. Plus, as usual on this channel, lots of tips to help you get started and have fun with your new camera. In this video, I'm going to be featuring the Canon R50, but Nikon will also get a mention. And to be fair, the tips that I'm going to be sharing should also apply to just about any new digital mirrorless or DSLR camera. Now let's start by taking a look at the camera's mode dial. Now this can be found on the top of the camera and can be rotated to select different camera modes. Auto being the factory default setting. Which modes your camera has will vary depending on the camera, but all cameras should have a manual option, aperture priority, shutter priority, and program mode. These are the modes that will allow you to use many of the camera features that you can't access in auto. So when I'm running my photography courses and workshops here in Brisbane, I mostly encourage the group to shoot in the manual mode. But if you're new, and certainly if you are a beginner, then the program mode, I think, is a great option to get you started. So select P on the mode dial, and I'll talk a little bit more about what the program mode can do later in the video. Now with the camera turned on, what's displayed on the screen will depend on what camera mode you're using. But typically what I see on the LCD screen is what the camera sees via the lens. And we call this live view. So if I wave my hand in front of the camera, you can of course see my hand on the screen in real time, hence the term live view. Now to save battery, my tip is to change what is displayed on the screen. And you can do this by pressing the info or display button. Each press will change what information is displayed on the screen and eventually you should see something like this. Now whilst this screen can look a bit intimidating at first, once you start getting familiar with the camera, you will find that this screen is very useful as it clearly displays the current camera settings such as shutter speed, aperture and ISO. Plus we are extending the battery life. Now we don't need to worry too much about these features at this early stage, but it is worth knowing that if you should wish to change any of these settings, you can do very easily using the Q button. So for example, push the Q button and use the surrounding four buttons to move around the screen. Here, for example, is the drive mode. You can use this to set the camera to take multiple photos or set up a self timer. Next to that is the focus modes. One shot is the default option. Servo is great for moving subjects. Now some cameras like this one may also have a touch screen. You can then select Q via the screen and select and change any of the camera modes all by using the touch screen. Now, if you put your camera up to your eye and use the viewfinder, the screen should turn off automatically and you will now see the live view actually through the viewfinder. Now note, if the display seems a little bit fuzzy and out of focus, try turning the dial on the side of the viewfinder. Or in the case of this R50, there's a little slider along the bottom and all you need to do is adjust it to suit your vision. Now here's a great tip if you are using a mirrorless camera. Did you know that you can play back and view your photos or videos through the viewfinder as well as the screen? Now this is a feature that I personally use all the time, particularly if I'm outdoors and it's hard to see the screen because of reflections. Now, if you're enjoying this video and these tips, can I please ask you a very quick favor? Please consider hitting the like button. You'll find it somewhere down here. Giving this video a thumbs up costs you nothing, but really helps these videos reach more people. Thanks a lot. Okay, now let's talk about lenses. 
DSLR or mirrorless cameras like the R50 have removable lenses. The lens can be easily removed by holding down the release button and turning the lens. When reattaching the lens, line up the color markers. Now some of the newer lenses have to be unlocked and extended before use, and it's likely you will see a message on the screen to prompt you. The numbers on the top indicate the focal length of the lens, also known as the zoom range. The lower the number, the wider the view. Turning the zoom ring on the lens increases the focal length, which is also known as zooming in. The subject will now be closer. Now when you're done rotating the lens back to the lock position, of course makes the lens more compact, so it takes up less space in your camera bag. Okay, another tip. If you do have another lens, when changing lenses, always try to swap them as quickly as possible to avoid any dust settling on the sensor inside the camera, because this can cause dust spots to appear in your images. Never touch the sensor. If it looks like it needs a clean, then you can buy sensor cleaning kits, but there are also plenty of companies who will do this for you. Contact your local camera store for more details. Now another tip is if you do have a second lens, make sure you use it. I meet so many people on my workshops who have a twin lens kit, but only use the smaller lens because it's lighter and more compact, which I understand. Different lenses will give you different results. Longer lenses, also known as telephoto lenses, are great for taking photos of subjects that are further away, but they can also make great portrait lenses too, as they will give you some background blur and compress perspective. So give it a try. Now at the very beginning of this video, you may recall I suggested selecting program mode, that's P on the dial, as an alternative to auto. Now let's talk about why. So the great thing about the program mode is that the camera will do most of the work for you, but unlike auto where your options are very limited, in the program mode, you will be able to adjust more of the camera's key features. So for example, with the Canon R50, turning the dial on the top of the camera will adjust the shutter speed, with the camera looking after the aperture. Plus, you also have the option to adjust the camera's ISO. This can be used to affect how bright or dark your images are. You cannot do this in auto. Now different shutter speeds will affect movement in different ways, so I think it's best to have a play around with this and get a feel for what works best for you and your subject. Now if you want to find out more about shutter speed, I suggest watching this video next. I'll pop a link somewhere up here and also at the end of the video. Now another reason for shooting in the program mode is that you will be able to take advantage of a camera feature that is called exposure compensation. Using this, you can easily adjust how bright or dark your images are. To use exposure compensation, look for a button and this icon. On a Nikon D3500, holding the button down and turning the dial will adjust the exposure. Here, an increase of one stop doubles the exposure and likewise a decrease of minus one stop halves the exposure. And on this Canon R50, pressing the exposure compensation and then turning the dial on the camera will again allow you to either over or under expose your image using exposure compensation. Now I've made over 250 photography videos that you can watch here for free. They cover many, many different topics and I've listed below the top five that I recommend you watching if you're a beginner and I hope you'll check them out. So that's it for this week. I really hope you have fun with your new camera and I hope you enjoyed the video. And remember, if you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up simply because it helps the videos get noticed and that helps my channel grow. If you want to see more from me, please consider subscribing. And that is, of course, about it. Other than to say, thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.